Hello and welcome New Day Z players, I'm Amish Zed and thank you for watching this tutorial. The comment section of my beginner's guide video had a few requests for a crafting guide, and with all the new players spawning in on the free weekend, I figured it was a good time to do it. This video is going to cover pretty much everything you can craft in Daisy, starting with how to craft and ending with how to make ghillie suits and storage containers. Before we begin, I want to thank Asmondian. You may have seen his post on the Daisy subreddit. He makes some amazing infographics for Daisy, which I used as a reference and for graphics in this video. So go check him out on Twitter and be sure to drop him a follow. Anyways, I hope you learned something from this video, and if you do, please subscribe and check me out over on Twitch. Actually, on Sunday, May 25th at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, I'll be streaming the True Colors event hosted by Happy Bombs. Uh, it's a hell of a lot of fun. It's a really great event. I, I call it the Super Bowl of DayZ. Uh, so I hope to see you guys then. All right, let's get into it. All right, let's get started by talking about survival crafting. In order to do most survival crafting, you're going to need a knife. If you can't find a knife, you can craft one by combining two stones. As I mentioned in my beginner's guide, you can find small stones on hiking trails and train tracks, but they're not always easy to find. If that's the case, you can use a pickaxe or a sledgehammer on rocks in order to mine large stones, which can then be broken down into small stones, which can then be crafted into a knife. Crafting is done by combining an item in your vicinity or your inventory with the item in your hand. You can do this by holding the primary item in your hand and then looking down at the secondary item on the floor. Then you hold left mouse button or right trigger for you console people. You can also craft in your inventory screen by dragging the secondary item to the one in your hand and combining them using the UI. If the secondary item is highlighted orange, you can combine and craft them into something. In this example, we're crafting some rags by cutting up a t-shirt using a knife. Very simple, you can pretty much cut up any piece of clothing. Next up, let's craft a rope, which can be done by combining two stacks of six rags. Ropes have a lot of different uses. I personally like to craft one and keep it with me just in case I have to restrain someone's hands, but I'll usually get rid of it once I find a pair of handcuffs. Uh, ropes have a lot of other survival uses, like crafting an improvised backpack. To craft an improvised backpack, you're going to need a burlap sack and some rope. If you want to upgrade this bag to a larger one, combine the bag with three small sticks. If you replace the burlap bag with a boar pelt, you'll craft a fur version of the same bag. It's the same size and everything, but it just has a different look to it. Ropes can also be used to craft a fishing rod. Combine a rope with a long stick, which we're going to talk about more in a minute, to make an improvised fishing rod. You'll need a bone hook as well, which can be crafted using bones and a knife. Use that same knife to dig up some worms and combine all three to have a stable source of food for your character. Next up, let's talk about fireplaces. Fireplaces can be really useful for survival as it allows you to cook food. They can also be crafted in a few different ways. All you need is to combine tree bark or rags with firewood or small sticks. Bark can be cut from a tree using a knife, and small sticks can be gathered from a small bush using a knife or your bare hands. If you're not wearing gloves though, it might cut you and make you bleed. The last type of stick you're going to need to cook is a long stick for roasting. These can only be gathered by large bushes, which is a recent and really stupid addition in my opinion. Uh, you can also break these long sticks down into small sticks if you need. You can use matches to light a fire, or you can craft a hand drill kit by combining bark and a small stick. You just need to make sure that you toggle the second craftable item by pressing the left mouse button or right trigger before then holding it down in order to craft that item. Firewood can be gathered by cutting down a tree with a hatchet or axe and can be added later and is obviously going to burn longer. You can also add large stones to upgrade the fire which looks a little bit nicer. The stone fireplace can be built up into an oven which is really useful because you can put a cooking pot on top. Cooking pots are just a really, you know, more efficient way to cook meat, uh, rather than using long sticks and cooking them one at a time. If you have the right supplies, you won't need a fire to cook in a pot. A gas canister and a stove attachment can be combined with the pot in order to make a portable gas stove, which is really useful on hardcore servers where you're going to do a lot of hunting. This is really nice as well because it doesn't create as much light or smoke, so you're less likely to be noticed while cooking. 
Gas canisters can also be combined with a gas lamp, although they haven't really nailed down the animation for this yet, your character's hand kind of gets in the way and blocks most of the light. I personally prefer to use a torch, which can be crafted by combining either a long or short stick and some rags. You can refuel a torch with more rags, but you can also upgrade it to burn longer by adding animal lard or by soaking it in gasoline. I just like the torch a lot. I think it looks really cool when you're running around with it at night, but obviously it does put you at risk. A couple of other really quick survival crafts. You can cut the seeds out of a vegetable with a knife and then replant the seeds for a sustainable food source. More information on agriculture can be found in my farming guide. This last one will be good for those of you running in squads. Craft a white armband by combining a sewing kit and a rag or you can craft a colored armband by cutting up any colored raincoat. All right, let's talk about crafting weapons. First is a spear, which can be made by combining a long stick and some bones. It's not the worst weapon in terms of damage, but it doesn't have a true stabbing spear animation yet. Next up is a nailed baseball bat. Everyone loves to channel their inner Negan from The Walking Dead, but us nerds, we know that Lucille Lucille had barbed wire on her, not nails. To make the nail baseball bat though, just combine the nails with the bat and it'll increase the damage. This weapon has a really good melee animation. Now we can talk about sawn off guns. There are three guns that can be sawn off. The Mosin, the BK-18, and the double barrel shotgun. Just use the hacksaw to shorten these into a two x five gun that can fit in any backpack and almost any piece of clothing. This does greatly reduce the accuracy of the gun. Honestly, the BK-18 is basically useless in its sawn-off form. The double barrel shotgun, though, is pretty useful, but only useful when using buckshot and at a much shorter range. I would only use it for indoors. The Mosin, however, can still have a PU scope attached to it in the sawn-off version, and is actually fairly accurate. I haven't tried it in a true firefight, but after this little test, I am hoping to give it a shot in the future. Last but not least, you can craft an improvised suppressor by combining a plastic water bottle and some duct tape. This can go on most rifles and pistols, but it may block your iron sights, so I only use it if I'm going to have an optic on my gun. It doesn't last nearly as long as true suppressors, usually only around two or three shots. It is, however, just as effective at silencing your shots and making it harder for players to figure out where you're shooting from. Zombies, on the other hand, are gonna find you pretty quickly. All right, let's move on to ghillie suits, which are highly sought after items in the game. All you need is netting, which can be found on wrecked boats on the coast, and burlap strips, which can be crafted by cutting up a burlap sack. A rifle wrap takes one netting and two burlap strips. A hood can also be made out of one netting and two burlap strips. A shrug, which covers your shoulders, can be made out of two netting and four burlap strips. A cloak, which goes a little further down your back, can be made out of three netting and six burlap strips. And finally, a full suit can be made out of four netting and ten strips. You cannot wear a backpack with the shrug, cloak, or full suit. You used to be able to color ghillies green with spray paint, but that's not currently in the vanilla game, so if you're crafting a ghillie, you're going to be stuck with the brown one. You can find a green ghillie at helicopter crash sites. More info on that in my loot guide. Now I don't want to get into base building in this video, it's a topic that really deserves its own video, so if you're interested in that, let me know down in the comments. I will however just show you really quick how to make a simple storage container. Just find a stack of wood planks and use a hacksaw to gather two planks. Combine those two planks with 10 nails and you've got yourself a simple storage container in a wooden crate. Well that's it for this crafting guide. Once again, thank you to Esmondi and for all the infographics. They're seriously great and super informative. You should definitely go follow them on Twitter. If you learned anything from this video and you enjoyed, please subscribe and check me out over on Twitch for some live streams. That's it till next time. Later everybody.